One of the most violent escape attempts on Alcatraz occurred in May of 1946. Many historians mark this date as the most significant event in the island's 29-year history as a federal penitentiary, and it was appropriately christened the Battle of Alcatraz. In the wake of the conflict, 14 guards and one inmate were left injured, while two correctional officers and three inmates lay dead from bullet wounds. A bank robber from Kentucky named Bernard Paul Coy, who was serving out a 26-year sentence on The Rock for committing a holdup using a sawed-off shotgun, devised a forceful escape strategy with five accomplices. Coy had carefully studied the habits of various guards over a period of several months. Then, on May 5, 946, aided by accomplice Joseph Kretzer, Coy smeared Axel Grease over his chest, head, and extremities, and started climbing the West End Gun Gallery from the juncture at Times Square and Michigan Avenue. Climbing hand over hand, he scaled the barred cage until he reached the top. Clenched in his teeth was a small cloth bag containing a crudely fashioned bar spreader device that had been fashioned from toilet fixtures in one of the prison workshops. Coy set the device firmly between two bars, which were approximately five inches apart, and using a small wrench, he was able to exert enough force to effectively spread the bars and create an opening nearly 10 inches in width. It is believed that Coy had also been limiting his intake of food in order to reduce his body mass. With Crestor eagerly watching his progress from below, Coy painfully squeezed his body through the opening and made his entrance into the West Gun Gallery. Coy quickly secured a riot club and positioned himself in a low crouch so that the officer on duty couldn't see him when looking through the door's access window. Waiting in ambush, his accomplices lured the officer out as the unsuspecting guard passed through the doorway, Coy forcefully hurled the steel door forward, throwing the officer off balance, and brutally clubbed him, forcing him to the floor. He then strangled him into unconsciousness with his necktie. Working swiftly, Coy lowered firearms and riot clubs to his partners below and searched for keys that would provide access to the recreation yard. The convicts were now fully armed, and were able to capture nine unarmed guards and lock them into cells, 404 and number 403, located at the juncture of Seedy Street and Times Square. But their escape plan soon began to crumble as they were unable to locate the key that would unlock the door leading to the recreation yard. The key had been concealed by a brave correctional officer named Miller, who had surrendered all of his keys to the convicts, except the most critical one. Miller had been able to quietly hide the key in the toilet of the cell, where he and the other correctional officers were being held hostage. Meanwhile, Coy and Kretzer had released three other accomplices from their cells. Clarence Carnes, the youngest convict ever sent to Alcatraz, Sam Shockley, and Miran Thompson were all serving sentences for violent crimes. When the breakout was discovered, the distressed sirens of Alcatraz wailed, indicating grave trouble at the prison, and the sound could easily be heard from the shores of San Francisco. The Coast Guard and the Marines were mobilized to furnish the support of demolition and weapon experts, and all the off-duty correctional officers were brought in to help take back the cell house from the armed and desperate convicts. Since the takeover had occurred after lunch, the majority of the prison inmates were in the industries, and the cell block was largely empty. Marines assisted correctional officers in assembling all of the industry workers into the recreation yard and helped to gather blankets and jackets for the inmates who were unable to return to their cells. Meanwhile, inside the cell block, a battle was raging. The escapees, realizing that they were unable to gain access to the recreation yard, had become desperate. In a violent rage and cheered on by inmates Shockley and Thompson, Joseph Kretzer took his revolver and leaning against the bars of cell Ta Ofro 3, started unloading rounds into the cramped cell. Officers fell in the hail of gunfire, some critically wounded. Back at the administration office, the warden had called together his lieutenants, and they had formulated a plan to send in strike teams to rescue the guards who were being held captive. Liltfil Bergen was assigned to lead the first team into the cell house through the West End Gun Gallery. 
As the team approached, two guards first fired several rounds to clear the corridor. The team then rapidly made their entry into the gallery and mounted the stairs to the first level. As one of the inmates fired rifle rounds at the assault team, Bergen worked feverishly to rescue the officer who had been ambushed by Coy. Harold Stites was one member of Bergen's team who courageously returned fire, attempting to suppress the convict's barrage. The 1938 escape attempt was one of the most violent in the island's history. As Bergen provided medical care to the downed officer, Stites continued to spray rifle fire into the cell house. Then suddenly Stites was struck by a bullet and yelled out that he'd been hit. I'm hit. Three other officers were also hit by gunfire during this assault. Stites was carried unconscious out of the gun gallery and laid onto a couch. He was quickly examined by the prison's physician and pronounced dead. The other officers were quickly transported by boat back to the mainland to be taken by ambulance to a local hospital. Bergen and four other officers returned to the gun gallery and communicated with the prison staff via one of the gallery phone lines. It appeared that an inmate was running from cell to cell, firing random shots into the gallery. At a little after 10 p.m., the associate warden took a group of 14 officers and burst into the cell house, hoping to rescue their colleagues. The team fell under heavy gunfire from the inmates who had positioned themselves on top of C block. One of the officers was able to close the D-block access door, but then was immediately struck in the shoulder by gunfire. The escapees realized that their chances of escape were fading, and Shockley and Thompson retreated back to their cells to contemplate how to explain their involvement in the plan. Not knowing the origin of the barrage of gunfire, the Marines started bombing D-block with explosives as the cell block filled with dense smoke. Coy, Kretzer, and Hubbard retreated in the utility corridor as the bombing continued. The Marines drilled holes in the ceilings, lowering hand grenades attached to wire and then detonating them. After nearly 48 hours of battle, the gunfire ceased. In the violent aftermath, Kretzer, Coy, and Hubbard were killed in the corridor from bullet wounds and shrapnel. The mastermind, Coy, was found dead wearing a guard uniform. One officer, William Miller, died from his injuries. A second officer, Harold Stites, was shot and killed during an attempt to regain control of the cell house. Thompson and Shockley were later executed together in the gas chamber at San Quentin for their role in the murder of Officer Miller, and Carnes received an additional 99-year sentence. It would take months before the cell blocks returned to any normalcy, and the scars on the cement and cell walls would remain strong reminders until the closure of the prison of the consequences of attempted escape.